Hi guys, today we're here testing the Polar A360. The A360 is a direct competitor to Fitbit Charge HR. The Fitbit Charge HR has got a few limitations, specifically it's small screen, fixed strap, and uh, absence of color. Whereas the A360 has got this removable strap, color screen, touch screen, waterproof. But the key thing is how accurate is the data? That's, that's, the, that's the key question for anyone taking these devices seriously. Now this is also where Fitbit's got a slight Achilles heel. Fitbit has locked in the data to the app and to the website, meaning you cannot export it. Whereas the Polar allows you to export your data from your activity panel to a CSV or TCX file, which you can analyze to your heart's content. So today we're gonna to do exactly that. We're gonna put the A360 on test, analyze the data, download it after two activities, five mile bike ride, and a 10 minute uphill treadmill run using the heart rate strap versus the wearable wrist base A360 head to head. Okay, let's see how it goes. Here we go. Okay, so let's have a look at the results. Now, the way I took this test was to undertake two fairly intense exercise workouts, one on the treadmill, plus 12% gradient, nine to 10 kph in speed, and around 10 minutes and the second an outdoor cycling time trial, roughly five miles in length. And on both occasions, I wore both devices. Let's have a look at the results from the treadmill then. So on the treadmill, you can see the gold standard here, which is considered the Garmin, the uh, heart rate strap, that's shown in blue. It begins around 77 beats per minute just before the exercise and builds up to about 157 beats per minute um, over that 10 minutes. Now the polar, which is shown in green, does have quite a significant deviation at the beginning. In fact, within the first five minutes, if you look at the difference trace in red at the bottom here, um, it's up to around 30 beats per minute over the actual real reading, which is a concern. But actually, to be fair, after that first five minutes, after that kind of settling in period, it tracks almost perfectly. In fact, um, with a little interval added on to the end, uh, after roughly 10 minutes, you can see there that the tracking was pretty much perfect. So yes, there is a concern initially when you start to use it, but the tracking is very accurate. We can summarize the tracking on the next slide. Um, the Polar starts at pretty much the exact same minimum heart rate and tracks to an abnormal maximum in the first five minutes. Um, and the average is obviously overestimated, one plus seven compared to one for one. But if we take away that first five minutes, the accuracy is extremely high. It was one for 7.5 average on the Polar versus one for 7.6 on the Garmin. Remember this uh, analysis is only possible because Polar allows you to export your, your uh, heart rate file to Excel as comma separated values or indeed into Strava by a, a TCX file. Now we can plot on an XY plot, um, i.e. scatter plot, the heart rate on the Garmin versus the heart rate on the Polar. Uh, this is called a correlation or regression analysis. And it basically shows you that the two, even with that deviation, were tracking pretty well. The correlation between the each individual point on the Polar and each individual point on the Garmin was was 81%. Of course, a perfect track would be on that straight black line all the time, but that very rarely happens. Okay, let's go to our second activity, which is the outdoor time trial. Now, again, the Garmin's in blue and the Polar's in uh, green. Now, on this occasion, I gave the devices a, little, a, little, a few more minutes to warm up, and maybe that accounts for their accuracy. But you can see here on the difference track, it's actually really impressive. The Polar tracks the Garmin almost perfectly throughout. At the end of the exercise, uh, when the time trial was complete, you can see the heart rate begins to come down from about 155 towards 120 or so. And in fact, the Polar is slightly more responsive than the Garmin here, which is, um, which is a surprise perhaps. We can summarize it here that in the time trial, they both started at the same minimum heart rate. They both went to the same maximum and the overall average on both was pretty much the same. So if you were reliant on the Polar on its own, at least for cycling, it looks pretty accurate. And if we just quickly plot that XY scatter plot of every point on the Garmin versus every point on the Polar, um, we get a reason reasonable accuracy. It's not perfect, 
Um, the overall correlation between the two devices is 0.68, which is uh, pretty respectable overall. So I conclude that there may be a problem in the initial warmer period, but after that initial warmer period, the Polar is uh, an impressively accurate uh, monitoring device, given its monitoring of the wrist as compared to at the chest strap. However, this is only based on two tests. And I would recommend you do your own testing and we'll try and do more extensive testing here um, as time permits. But credit to Perla for the overall device and also allowing the data to be exported as a um, comma-separated value or TCX file.